All right, so welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and in this wonderful and exciting tutorial, we're trying to see how to add rules to your anti-gravity ID. So rules are another alternative in which you can give some readme for your agent. How do you want your agent to operate? So in case you want, you have an existing code, an existing functionality, and you want it to still be there, right? Or you have some coding styles, any kind of rule you want to give to your AI agent within your anti-gravity ID to follow, that's where we use this option, right? You can also use agent.md, but let's see another alternative. So the rules apply globally, and it's across the entire project you'll be doing, or workspace that is for a particular individual workspace. So let's see an example. So I'll go back again to my integrity ID here, and I have my workspace already created. And then to be able to go to the rules file, right? So I'm going to first create a readme. Let's go to readme.md. And I'm going to paste in something here. So, okay, working with rules for agents, right? So we have, so this is something simple, right? Now, how do you set up a rule for this workspace? So I'll go back to my anti-gravity settings down here. Then if I click on it, we have custom customizations, click on manage. Then inside my manage, we have the option to see your rules, right? The rules that you want. So if I go back here, we have global, rules which is going to be rules to get, guide the behavior of the agent on your system right globally so if i click on it it's going to show me gemini so because currently the model is called gemini so we have gemini.md and you can write your global rules for the agent here right as you can see from here then we also have workspace so workspace is paired this particular workspace so i can go back to the workspace here then you can specify the coding style or the code execution so let's give one so code execution so I'm going to give some restrictions for it. Then once it does that, it's going to go into my agents slash rules. Then it's going to create my code execution.md, right? So this is my rule. Then it has the activation mode. So we have always on means this rule will always be applied. We have manual, we have model decision. The model is going to decide if to apply it or not and can be global, right? So let me paste in the content to describe the rule for the agent here in Markdown. So this is the rules that I want to use. Let me hide this one. Let me explain. So the main idea is I describe the rule to control, right? Control which shell commands the, the agent may run automatically. So I have my auto allow or allow auto. So I can run these commands, right? So in case you are using Python, you can also do the same thing. But what I want to deny is I want to deny removing of the entire file. So you cannot remove any file. I want to also uh, deny removing of an item. So this is PowerShell command force push or curl and bash, right? I want to deny these things. And because I want to deny this, the agent will know that, okay, these are things I want to deny, right? Then also give some explanation for it. So this is my rules. Let me save this one. Now let's go back again to the agent. And I wanted to, as you can see from here, you have my file, right? So I want to see if it can delete this. So I can say, um, create uh, Julia, Calculator, right? Calculator.gl program, right? So let's see. So it's going to create a simple Julia Calculator.gl program, which is going to be found here. So it's going to give the plan doing whatever you are doing. But later on along the way, I wanted to see if it can delete this readme, right? Or any of them. You can see that just finish. If I open it, you have the file here. I can accept. Perfect. Now let me see if it can delete this readme. So we say, can you remove the readme? Oh. And this is the moment of truth. Because we have a rules, right? Let's see what it's going to do. And you can see from here that it's stealing some stuff, right? You can see, I hit a roadblock, right? The, the, <laughs> so let's just finish. You can see that it's trying to go through the thinking process and then specify that it cannot delete that file right because i specify some rule so let's see if i check it out it says i am now focusing on safe solution for the requested file removal since i am not certain if this is git it so if i get status i can suggest git remove otherwise i'll present patient i'm leaning toward blocked it says that i'm leaning toward explicitly stating that remove item is blocked by design so you see that the thing is so smart. <laughs> it's trying to look at different alternative, but it's saying that I'm leaning to forward. 
I'm leaning towards explicitly stating that remove item is blocked by design, but I could also consider CMD C Dell remove. The thing is smart. See, I've given it the rules, but the thing is smart to use different alternatives, right? And you can see that there are some rules, right? So that is how the rules are applied. So once you specify a rule, it is very smart to obey the rules, but sometimes too, it can also be so powerful enough to find alternative, right? So you see that it's this final alternative here. <laughs> it's funny. It's really funny and smart. I said it cannot do this. I said it cannot do um, remove item, right? So that was inside the rules. I told it not to do this, these two. It cannot do this. It cannot do this, right? But apparently it is still looking at a different alternative. So it's suggesting this <laughs> very smart. However, using this without it might be allowed. So I would clarify the parameters to the user, right? So the thing is very smart. So rules are very useful to guide your agent on what to do and what not to do. Right? So that is it's a simple example of how to use rules for your agent. Very cool. But sometimes the agent can be very smart, right? As you can see, just trying to find different alternative. This is another alternative. <laughs> and at the end of the day, it's couldn't, right? It's giving us the command supposed to run. And then <laughs> the thing is very persistent, eliminating the obstacle. So it is so smart <laughs> that although I've given it rules, right, it's trying to find a way around it. <laughs> very cool. So that is something I want to share with you about how to add rules. So in case you have some code, right, that you want to maintain the functionality, you can also add another rule. I can go back again to the settings, add more rules, so I can specify another rule for the workspace again. Let's say uh, code style, right, and then you can specify your code style that you want. So something like for Julia, in case I have some code style I want it to obey or code quality. So I can just say follow these things. And then anytime I give it instructions, it's going to follow those particular approach for it, right? So you can define more rules as much as you want, then you can set them up, right? And always save them, right? So this is per the workspace, but they can also set for the entire system. So thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you have learned something. See you another time. And Gemini module is very, very smart, right? Because of how it's able to think of different alternatives, right? So you have to be explicit with some of the things that you tell it not to do. Thank you for watching. See you another time. Stay blessed. Bye.